and welcome to day three of uh, season two and let's get out and around whether I was, ho I was <laughs> secretly hoping that the weather didn't actually save properly and that I'd have another roll at the dice of getting a clear day this is uh, mid to late morning and it's basically still way too um, the visibility is nowhere near good enough for me to wander around looking for new areas essentially now, I do have a bit of charcoal so let's survey the local area at least good so the derailment is a forestry lookout I'll go and find the next place somewhere to uh, go and map out but that could be for tomorrow or later today so I'm going to spend the first couple of hours uh, hopefully waiting for this to sort itself out that'll do um, yeah let's use another bug So I'm going to essentially try and do produ relatively productive things for the morning, waiting for the weather to clear. As soon as the weather clears, we're making a, a play out for the next area. So this place I have plenty of uh, materials for me to come back to in an emergency. Oh, balls. Take some charcoal. See, so down to nine wood matches isn't great. 80% chance of starting a fire is great. But, uh, Come on, little fire. Not having wood matches is bad. The good thing about this whole area being relatively widely populated, so it's like fishing cabins, there's cabins by the end of the lake, two or three different sections of those. There's like, um, so we've got a forestry workers' cabin as well, and then these obviously these lookout posts, and there's a couple of little um, hunting shelters etc good thing about all of those Come on. use yeah good so the good thing about that big variety of man-made areas is that it's very likely that we're going to come across plenty of stuff for us to drink and eat and sort ourselves out with. 25 minutes in that pan. 20 minutes in that pan, that's good to know as well, okay. So something cooks faster in a cooking pot than it does in a can. That's pretty realistic, it's got a bigger bottom, that, that kind of thing, etc. But that's just useful to know about the mechanics of the game. So loads of this has changed since I've last played it. Um, like a ridiculous amount. I'm just going to stay near this window and try and do reasonably productive things. That looks like a good repair. One hour. Oh, There's a good chance of burning that off. That's the problem. So let's not do that. So I don't want to stay doing these kinds of things for so long that we end up buggering around and ruining our food. I don't want that burnt. That should take us to about 24 minutes. Good. I didn't really have to eat these. But what I definitely do want is some of the liquid, some of the heat, and just not to be losing condition this early that we got 25 minutes left <laughs> this door <man. laughs> yeah the weather's closing in not opening out oh, this is this is the kind of thing where you start to get stuck in an area and this is why you always want kind of one or two days supplies ideally before you get in these kinds of places right now I can actually I'm just gonna slap a load of water in these and it's not because I'm going to use it 
it's because of the fact that I'm going to store it here. So that if I come back here, or when I come back here, more than likely, uh, in some kind of emergency, not only do I have fuel, etc., but I've got water just ready to just, you know, smash out and down. What happened to the dog food? Did I eat that? No, I'm carrying it. Good. If things weren't so grim, I'd be tempted to leave the dog food behind as just emergency material, essentially. The I was going to say, the good thing. The good thing about dog food is that it's surprisingly high in calories for its weight. I mean, as soon as they if, they, if they ever do something a bit like Project Zomboid and start putting like a morale system into these things, then how oh, one not? Right. Let's not do that again. Let's make sure we have plenty of fire going. So this is this is a really forgiving area, right? If I was doing this kind of thing in the last place where there was just no human habitation, you start just being careless and losing matches. I mean, you are running on a, a thin ice there. You can really screw yourself easily and fast. This kind of area where there's just so much human habitation around that you know you're out a few matches. So what? You know, ultimately, who cares? So let's get some wood. Out of this. What do I want? I should say two. Put one in there to begin with. Alright, we can kind of worry about the rest later. So we got must remember to keep checking out there. So what we're quite happy to do is basically burn almost all of this rifle cleaning kit out to get this rifle up to scratch and then just abandon the cleaning kit because sooner or later this is just going to be dead weight, right? Where I've got a fully functioning take it make it we've got a fully functioning uh, rifle and essentially, oh actually I haven't got that much drinking water with me have I? I'll just keep that. Okay, 16, 23, 45. So yeah, I'd much rather burn through all of the rifle cleaning kit and that kind of thing and then just have a really high quality rifle which is basically maxed out and leave a tiny little bit of cleaning kit here Come on, midday, you've got to clean her up by now. The mirror is actually getting slightly worse. That is unfortunate. until melted. I have to put another firewood in that. Okay. Right, while we're thinking about this, let's just read the wilderness kitchen. Why not? Let's wrap an hour out. Good. more promising. <laughs> Hate this door! Yes, right, it's clear. So let's take this stuff off. How's that got left? 16 minutes, that's fine. 15 minutes until melted. Right, we'll wait for that to boil. We're going to take that boiled water. We're going to sling all but two and a half litres into that case. 
and then we're going to make a, a break for it. I'm going to check how much weight we've got going on. Eighteen kilos, that's not too bad. Plenty of medicines. Food's in reasonably good order. Let's leave that behind. I want to take all that with me, really. I do think we can get rid of two of those. Take that. Let's take that. I do think we can get rid of another one of these recycled cans. Oh, one of those and a pot. That's fine for me. Let's chuck that back in, the rifle one. And the whetstone. We can come back for those when we need them. Is that right? 100 grams? Yeah, 92%, 85%. I've got absolutely loads of that. I know where I'm leaving it. It's going to be a long time before I need that again. Let's do it. Embers, 15 minutes till boiled. Right, let's just very quickly get two sticks. Let's chuck two sticks in there. Ten minutes, seven minutes of fire. Right, that'll do. We come back. There'll be basically that of drinkable water left. This is beyond the joke. What's the matter with me? Oh yes. I mean, this is probably cold. It's not even cold. The air temperature's one. This is absolutely ideal. Right, where are we going? That's the question now. Maybe there? Little cabin? That off in the distance looks like more cabins and a lake. That's where we're going. Right, where's the sun? So we want to hit the railway and head right with the sun on our right hand side. Get onto that. And then over to there. Good. Plan sorted. Taking that. Thank you very much. Right. Let's make a move. Right, I'll never come back here. <laughs> Just that sodding bloody door. <laughs> Actually, that one degree C could be because of the fact I still had a fire with embers going. So let's just check when we're going down here. We are early afternoon, which is normally the warmest part of the day. And it is clear, which isn't terrible. Minus 15. That's more like it. That's kind of, when it's really clear like this, quite often it can be quite cool. Which is fine. Let's get up here. Right, that just shows us the broken one, which is fine. So let's get down this, over to the railway. If we come out the other side, which isn't the railway, we'll turn around to the sun's at our back. Go over to the railway, then right. Find that cabin, left. Depending on how much daylight we have left, we'll either go into the lake and then head back to that cabin or we'll just go for the cabin right, I think this way looks like we're just going to come straight back down onto the railway if we're careful what we do want to do is get down quickly what we also want to do is get down safely So being hungry is one of the things which kills you the slowest in this game. Just like in real life. It does kill you faster in this game than it would in real life, in my opinion. Um, 
but it's a game. So it's the one which I would most be comfortable putting up with, if you like. Now, there's a couple of dead deer around here. Might might consider getting one of those. Probably not. Beauty of getting some meat off of that is it gives me something to drop to get the walls away, but I also actually have, thinking about it, a rifle. I'm about to put five rounds in it. That's pretty good going. We've got the sun on our right just the way we wanted to. This is why this kind of thing's really worth working out to begin with. That's why the outpost is so useful. You kind of look up there and go, where do I want to explore next? I want to explore the mountainside next, or do I want to do more of the lake stuff? I decided more of the lake stuff. I can sit there and look down and go, okay, this is how I get there. Then you observe where the sun is, and then you can use the sun, as long as it doesn't cloud over too quickly, to you know guide your way. The mixture of the sun. The sun starts to go use big landmarks, right? How does that huge, tallest peak relate to where I want to be? Now, this is the lake. There's some water which you can actually fall through the ice on this now. Seen that happen. But I don't think it's here. I think the lake is essentially safe. I think that's other areas. Where you kind of go out onto the coast. Yeah, okay, we're around about midday. We're we're going to come back, that's where we're going to stay, right? So we're going to come out, explore this area here, have a look at some of these fishing cabins, see what we can find, and then we're going to stock up a second fallback shelter here. I think that might be the what I'm going to be end up spending a lot of my time doing. It's a wolf in the distance, two wolves in the distance. Let's get a nice wide berth. Do have both flares to scare them off and a rifle to, well, one, scare them off, and two, put a nice big hole in them so that they can become my dinner instead of me becoming their dinner. Three wolves, a pack. Okay, let's cut this quite wide. I really don't want to be in it is a position where I shoot one, that dies, the other one runs around like a lunatic, the third one comes along and mauls me. I don't want to get into a long drawn out confrontation with a whole pack of wolves, that's a terrible idea. Right, a few sticks. Being a little bit tense for a bit. They're going to mess around over that side. We're going to hit that fishing area and then skirt around this right outside, get to those ones, get to those cabins over there and then if the weather closes in we'll just stay in one of those, right? If it doesn't we might try and go all the way around, hit back or we might turn back and come the way we got here. I basically don't leave anything in these. They're really useful. Excellent, another round. I'll do it. Good. Tinder, food, water. This is going well. I don't leave anything in these particularly because they're not the kind of places where I'm expecting to end up in an emergency. I'm going to be either aiming for places where I know or the other thing I'm like the thing I'm definitely not going to do is the weather's closed in. I can't see where I'm going. I'm not going to be wanting to wander around it in the middle of a lake. Yeah, I'm going to be sticking to the edge of walls. That kind of thing. Looking for caves, looking for any sign of life. Yeah, 
So I might go around the outside rim of a lake because there's lots of habitation and lots of things. As you can see, the entire outside rim is covered. But if you can only see 10, 20 meters around, you can wander around on this lake quite happily and just perish. I have no intention of doing that. Why is that? That's either nothing or it looks a little bit like a body. It's nothing, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So this is just telling me that there's a route this way. I might come just here to this western access bit. Okay, good. You can see now that I'm going to need a lot more. Oh, it's picking up. You can see now I'm going to need a lot more charcoal than I originally imagined. I thought it was going to end up like having three or four bits, and that would be plenty for me to just sort of get around and get all this kind of area mapped out. That's interesting. There's a place to climb up there. If I'm in really good condition, I'll give that a go at some point. So if it just stays like, cold and windy, etc., I'll cut back around this um, this area so, and. So dry. Get over to the big proper cabin over there. If it closes in too hard and too quick, then I have reserves right up this one. There's another set of us over there, and there's a third set of cabins over there. Do even some ice fishing before I come back around and Jesus. hit that other area. So it depends what we encounter really. If the weather closes up we'll get you know, too many more wolves. That kind of stuff will be a bit more cautious. But for now, a tiny little cabin. Absolutely jam-packed with stuff. What have we got? We've got crates we can break down, we've got reclaimed wood we can burn, we've got work boots, stacks of papers, that's tinder, I'll take that. Not an edible fish, sadly. Take another bit of tinder, that's fine. Little lamp shelves. Anything under the bed? More tinder. It's generally worth having around about the same amount of tinder as mashes. If you end up with too much of it, you know, out that way, then you're never going to burn through it. He's carrying around dead weight. Hmm, this will come in handy. Already got a can opener. What's my condition like for mine? Do I is it worth me taking it and dropping it off somewhere? I don't, I just can't see myself burning through all that condition. I just got I'm gonna throw caution to the wind and leave that here. No, I'm not gonna get through eighty percent two percent of my can opener and then not have a hatchet or a knife or just be at that point in such a desperate situation you know what if I just smash the can against the ground and lose like 20% of the stuff you know ultimately in that position so what dog food pork and beans even better much prefer that of an evening Yeah, it's not too much for it in a calorie point of view, but there's a lot of it in a psychological point of view for me in terms of whether I'm forcing my poor old person to. Uh... This stuff will come in here. Oh, nice, Took. Or whether I'm forcing them to eat dog food, you know, that's <laughs> so you start to feel bad for the uh, for the person is when you're like you know you're in dire straits right when you're smashing open cans of dog food on the, on the ground, and, like frantically scooping them into your face. More matches is great. So just this whole experience between Mystery Lake and whatever region it was that I was in last time. I still don't even know what region that was. I don't know whether it was one of the like Timberwolf Mountain or one of the others. <laughs> <laughs> what are the others? So it's for, for, Forlorn Muskeg, Timberwolf Mountain, Mystery Lake, which is where we are. 
There's a broken railroad one now, which is new. Uh, oh, and there's the one which is to do with the story mode, right? Oh, yes, hatchet, right? All tools now sorted. That's a great position. Is this... Oh, I thought it was a dead wolf. I was actually happy with the dead wolf that time. Oh, normally I'm all for finding dead men, but... In this game, at least, you're not going to be carving off the, uh, the flesh and eating it at any point. It's not to say that you wouldn't get desperate enough in real life, but, you know. There are things which you don't mind putting in a game, and there's things which you really <laughs> would question. You might sort of start going, ah, oh, am I still getting my PG rating for this? What do I do with that? I can get a reclaimed wood from that. So I found out as well, last time, that'll do. Last time, the, um, Hatchet's actually good for breaking up this like scrub brush, I think it was, called something like that. And it's basically an impassable little thorny bush. And it's the impassable bit which was surprising. So you can kind of sit there and smash out a bunch of sticks and that's, you know, okay, that's of some use, right? Better to have sticks and fuel than it is to not have sticks and fuel, but... More importantly, it was the impassable bit. So it actually put it in a in a couple of areas of the level. Oh, no left behind. There's nothing left. The matches got wet, and I'm down to a couple of tins of peaches and a can of pop. I don't know what to do. I want to go, but where do I go? Those wolves. Those wolves everywhere, scratching at the door, pouring at the windows, waiting, waiting. A dull knife, a rock, a length of rope. It's like one of those jokes you hear about when three guys walk into a bar and the bartender says, Hey, you can't bring rope in here. Something about afraid not. <laughs> Something like that. What a terrible pun. I'm taking that cause, just because it's got an amazing pun. Right, now I feel like I'm in, about to be in just an amazing position. What have we here? Right, so we've got load. Uh, we're a little bit thin on the ground on food, but not hugely. You know, we're in a great position in terms of capacity to make fire. We've got all of our tools. We've got okay-ish clothes, not the best clothes, but you know, they're a lot better than they could be. Just wipe my two com while I think about that. I'm talking about clothes. Um, tomato soup, not bad. So we're improving the food situation again. So what I would say here, what I'm thinking about, is whether I use this area and this cloth. Maybe I do that now. I'm just going to break down this cloth while I'm here. So. That was really a, a, a balance of time, as the weather is starting to worsen. And the fact that I really want to have spare cloth so that I can improve my clothes. I've been dropping a lot of like the trainers and that kind of stuff because they take a long time to break down. I think you get, I think, you get kind of like a little bit of leather for your running shoes or trainers and that kind of stuff. And it's kind of okay. Get this out just in case. But you know, that's, it's a lot of effort for not a huge amount of return, is essentially what I'm getting at. So you can end up quite easily in a position where... That's my health doing, that's fine. You get quite easily in a position where you end up burning a lot of time, and time's a harsh resource in this game, right? Like, we, as time passes on, everything you have gets worse. Everything. It's like all your equipment deteriorates, you're losing, th you're like gaining thirst, you're gaining hunger, you're losing your, your 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 ability to resist fatigue. You know, time basically is a, a bit of a killer. So what you don't want to be doing is wasting it. You're really spending it wisely. That's one of the things that I really loved about the fireplace changes. It allows you to kind of put water and food down. And while those are all sort of, you know, squirreling away and working themselves out, 
you can be getting on with other things. You know, reading research books, I'll take it. repairing equipment. This is a really good example. Right, good. These are now some really impressive clothes. Outer layer. Let's say which one's the outer layer, so we'll just wear that, that's fine. Another thing? No, that's worse. Okay. So yeah, so it's all about kind of efficiently spending your time and making sure that you're spending it in the right ways to do the right things in you can easily put yourself into a desperate situation. Excellent. Always looking at corners of the crates, boys and girls. Easily put yourself into a desperate situation by not being careful with your time. Definitely use this. So that's why I'm quite happy to ditch things like running shoes at this stage. You know, if I was really, really short and I just, or in an area with low population. There's just not a lot of clothes around at all. Yeah, I'd probably give it a go. I'd be like, is it ideal? No. Is it all I've got? Yes. And that's kind of how that works, right? But for now, I'm in a pretty good position. A bit on a cold side, a bit on the over encumbered side, a bit on the hungry side, but I'm about to go back into big house. I'm going to lay that out with supplies. I, I think in the outpost you've probably got a good few days worth of supplies. They're not food but certainly fuel and from that fuel we've got some water which is away and we can obviously make more water easily enough using that fuel. I'm going to get this building I think into an even better position. I'm going to leave this one with a few days supplies of fuel. I have a bit of a wander around and, and do the same kind of in the other areas. So if I manage to get to an area here and it all closes in, I don't have to basically just go, oh wow, that was nice. Game over. Why is this sunset? I'm really struggling. My guy will not run. It's got to be an encumbrance thing. This is potentially bad with the walls. And I also am losing my bearings over exactly which. one of these areas is it that one with the building? that one's definitely got the walls <laughs> so I'm gonna go out and around oh here we go, this is good but what I really don't want to do get those wolves attention but I've got no meat on me so I shouldn't smell very much these are gonna give me good food and it's when you get the, the cattails you just end up with more tinder than you know what to do with so I've probably been off some tinder shortly but We'll worry about that when we get to our nice little safe place. We could just bundle that anywhere, really, near a fireplace and just go, you know what, there's 38 bundles of tinder there. You'll never run out. Well done. See, it's things like that, you see. You notice the, the crow's feather? And you immediately think, there's got to be a corpse nearby. It's one of the things I love about this game. Is how pack is getting too heavy you can have such a harder time of it, even in exactly the same level under exactly the same conditions, if you're just not paying attention. You know, you miss the little details, you miss that box of matches in the corner of the crate. You know, you miss the fact that there was a little um, crow's feather there, and that means the fact that there's a corpse hidden nearby, effectively. And it was pretty well hidden. Right, that's the structure, that's the fishing hut, so over here, and up around this side, I'll be there, that'll be fine. Not happy about this food situation. Right, 
I see a stale chocolate bar. Let's get some energy back in this because it's just so sluggish. It won't run. Too tired. Too cold. Pack's too heavy. Too lazy. It should be really starting to get cold now. Yeah, minus 14, 13. I don't rest soon, I'm wind chill. This happens as well, is you can actually not be all out on a couple of things, but you can be, which allows you to lose condition really fast, right? But you can just be close to zero on a whole bunch of things. And that just slows everything down and makes life so much harder. So it is particularly dangerous when you've got things like wolves knocking around. And I have no ability of holding down a sprint key. You can see at the bottom, right? Like, I can't run. Like this is as fast as my person can move because they're exhausted. They're starving. You know, they're, they're in bits basically. They're not dying yet, but they're just at a stage where they're just, they, they're gassed out, man. And that's that. So my aim is to just not be in a position where I might need to run from wolves. I'll keep my gun here. If one goes for me, it's definitely getting a pot shot taken at it. It's been a long time since I fired this gun, and these are <laughs> not the best at keeping those sights aligned, I have to say. I'm guessing there's also a because there's a bow and arrow skill, right? And there's a, a cooking skill and a fire lighting skill. So there's got to be a marksmanship skill. My hope is, is that as you fire more rounds successfully, I'm guessing that's how you increase your marksmanship. Maybe you increase it by missing. Maybe it's just firing rounds, I don't know. But what I really want is that whole kind of sight wobble ruins the sight picture to go away. This is now coming up to night time. This is this is the kind of thing where if I didn't know there was a cabin right there, right, this is dangerous. But I do know, because I planned it. Came up there, saw where I was going, cut down here, got my plan for how to get around, got my conditions in place of what causes me to either abandon the mission or stay down there. You know, what 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 scenarios can play out. And it's that forethought that stops you being in this position where the, you know, your visibility is about to go, your temperature is about to plummet, you can't run. I mean, <laughs> I'm talking like an awesome pro at not dying in this game. If you've seen season one, um, don't don't watch that. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying and, and be convinced that I, I'm halfway competent. Don't Don't watch that. So just over here I'll get back into my little safe house building and uh, all will be well with the world. I'll be warm, I can eat, I can sleep. And here we go. Damn. Back over to here. So and it is most definitely time to mark this bit out. Like for me the most important bits to map out are the bits where that you care about staying and the local landmarks. What is this? A light. Interesting rock again. Love getting uh, distracted with interesting rocks. And I think this pass must be what comes over to the other side of that um, lake, but presumably there's a fork there somewhere which takes you somewhere else. Can worry about that another day. Oh. This isn't as good as it could have been. So, um... <laughs> I can't see. Is a problem I'm immediately having. There's a curtain. So, <laughs> what I do like is the fact that you can kind of move the... Oh, that feels like I've gone upstairs. Is this upstairs? This is upstairs. I'm going upstairs. What's that? Stack of papers. So you kind of get the impression that you're actually able to kind of feel about. 
get that kind of sense of right there's a bed okay so let's do this I'm gonna get some calories and some liquid in me by drinking my sodas Man, sodas are quite good for this because they're um, you get a lot of water you get I don't know 250 calories isn't it? It just flashed up then. Anyway, so <laughs> if you care about it, wait till the next time I see it or uh, don't. <laughs> I was going to smash some of these as well. I just want enough calories to seep through the night. Yeah, so my hypothermia should go tonight. My risk of getting hypothermia. I'm entirely expecting there to be something like a um, a lamp or a lantern, something like that in here which I can use. So I felt my way over to a bed. I go for eight hours. See what I can manage. I'll be nice and warm. I got enough calories in me. Got loads of water. Eight hours sleep will give me plenty of Any rest? Let's have a bit of a drink. Yeah, I'll smash one more soda. What are we looking at? That's probably what, about three, four more hours? Let's try that. Okay, we're into daylight. And this is going to be it for us, but as you can see, we're already looking promising. We've got other bedrolls, we've got books, we've got cloth, we've got all kinds of containers and stuff to contend with. This is a really well supplied place. I mean, th this is, to be honest, to leave this place in a good position where someone's going to be able to survive for two or three days in it basically means stripping about half of it out and taking it with me. So <laughs> this is going to be uh, super easy, quite content with this at the moment. Right, so I'm going to leave that there. This is a, another day successfully survived. This is going so much better than my last run. Uh, don't watch my last run. It's uh, not representative of how awesome I am this is. So, uh, yeah, I will catch you uh, on the rebound.